you know, I don't know what any of you guys' background is, but I just want to let you know that, that anything is possible, man, because to come from where I'm from and be where I'm at today, it's, it's, it's unheard of. You know, I, I talk to my friends back home and my friends that are alive but that ain't in jail. You know, they got minimum wage jobs and they got two or three baby mamas and, you know, they can't really support their kids. They're still living with their mom and my grandmother. So, you know, it's just, it's just an eye-opening experience for me, man. But um, when I was 13 years old, I got arrested. And um, I spent six months in the boot camp. I got out um, for about two months. And I got arrested again. Um, just being around the wrong people, gang banging, and uh, doing things like that. And I was out for about four months that time. And I got arrested again. And I had nine months. And um, I got into a lot of fights in there and stuff like that. Just being young and mad at the world. And, you know, and I was still trying to figure out, you know, who I was, what I wanted to be in life. And um, I got into a bunch of trouble while I was in there. And they changed me off. They sent me to a different place that was a lot worse. So I ended up doing 16 months in there. And for a lot of guys that play sports or, you know, anybody that does anything in any of your guys' profession that you guys look towards to, they've been doing this since they were real young. And that's been their dream their whole life. And football wasn't like that for me. Football, I didn't even, I never played football as a kid. You know, a lot of these people, they play football as their youngsters growing up. I never did that. I was in the streets and, um, you know, I was doing a lot of bad things that I, that I regret right now. And, um, so when I came home from this place, I, um, I didn't know what I, what I wanted to do. My mom would show up to court crying, you know what I mean? And my mom had my little sisters in her hands, and you know, I would see my little sisters crying. And, um, and that was just real hard for me, because when you do something wrong when, you, when you're younger, you don't realize that you hurting your family and your loved ones more than you know, you really hurting yourself. Even though you're the person in trouble or you're the person that is happening to, but it's really your family and your loved ones. Those are the people who's really hurting. You know, the people who changed your diapers while you was young, the people who had your back, even though you're wrong. You know, I know a lot of y'all got moms in here who stick up for y'all. Like, man, even though that you was wrong about doing something, they still love y'all regardless. And those are the people that hurt at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Because they feel like you let them down. So when I came home, I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, I didn't, I didn't have no role models. You know, I didn't, I mean, all the people that I looked up to were basically doing the same thing that I was doing. Or, you know, or were in jail, or, you know, they all made fast money some kind of way. So I was like, man, I, I don't know what to do. So luckily, my mom moved out of Compton, she moved to Long Beach, and um, I got a job back in groceries, and I was working at, at Kroger. It's like, a, it's called Albertson, but it's y'all Kroger, same thing. And, um, and I finally got off probation. I was back in groceries for a while. And all out of the blue, my friend called me that I haven't talked to in like three years. I don't even know how he got my number, but he called my mama's house phone. And he was like, um, hey, man, you know, I'm at this junior college right now. And it's right down the street from your mom's house. Um, they're paying me to go to school. So I was like, what? You get paid to go to school? So my mind, when I was that young, I was like kind of messed up in the head. I was like, man. I'm just going to go to school and get this check and then leave. I wasn't worried about going to school because i never been to high school. I never, I never did none of that stuff. So um, when I got there, he was letting me know that he played football. And I was always kind of big because I was incarcerated all my life. So I was always in there working out and stuff. And uh, he let me know he was playing football. So he told me to go talk to the football coach. I went to talk to the football coach. I'm like, coach, man, I never played football before. You know, um, I'm 21 years old. And... Uh, he was like, man, as long as you work, you know what I mean, we'll be happy to have you on our football team. So I was like, all right, man, I'll give it a try. So later on that day, I went home. I turned it on uh, ESPN Classic. They got this old running back in the NFL. His name is uh, Walter Payton. And he blamed all his success on his study habits and running heels. Every time you hear about Walter Payton, you, you think about running heels. So it just so happened that my mother had a heel. Um, in like back of our house. So I would run that hill every day until I would be throwing up on the side. My legs were burning so much. You know, it, it was the worst pain that I've ever been through because I never put my body through any kind of pain like that. But that let me know what it took 
to be a football player and to be successful, that it took every ounce of energy, every ounce of courage, every ounce that I had in my body to go out there and to be what I wanted to be. And, um, you know, it just so happened when I did get to the junior college, first year I made All-American. You know, it, it's just an unbelievable story, man. And um, for me to be where I am today, I just want to let you guys know that you guys can do anything, anything, man. But you got to work towards it. You know what I mean? It might seem easy and it might seem like, uh, man, or it might seem too hard. Like, man, I don't know if I can do it, man. I got to study eight, nine hours just to get a, a C on this test. But it's worth it in the long run, man, because that's what's going to set you guys above, you know, the people that you went to high school with, above the people, you know what I mean, who you're trying to be. Like, those, that's, that's what's going to set work ethic. I'm not the most talented person in the world, you know what I mean? I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not fast, that fast, I'm not that strong, but every time I line up on that football field, I know there's nobody out there that's going to outwork me. Nobody. Because when I line up, it's more than football to me. It's more than football because when I line up against this one man right here, and I'm trying to get to this quarterback, this is what's going through my head. He ain't going to take food out of my family mouth. You know what I mean? That's how I go about football. And that's how you guys should approach life. Man, these people ain't going to take food from me. I'm going any way, anyhow, I'm going to chase this success and I'm going to make it happen. I don't care what it takes. You know what I mean? I don't care how many nights I got to stay up. I don't care how much sleep I don't get. I don't care about none of that. I got to, I got to make this happen some way, somehow. In a good way, though. In a good way, it's taking no shortcut. You can't take no shortcuts. Every time you take a shortcut, something bad always happens. You know what I mean? So... You guys just got to keep pushing, man, and, and never give up. You know what I mean? Anytime that anybody ever tells you, like, you can't do this, you can't do that, that's why I'm here. Because anybody who's came from a family who's, who struggled, that's me. I've, I've been in y'all's shoes. You know what I mean? I know what it's like to go out there and put food on my family table at 13 years old. You know, I know what it's like to be away from my mom a year and a half, you know what I mean, at 15 years old. I know what it's like to support my three younger sisters, and I'm not even their daddy. So I, I, know, I know what that's like. I know the struggle, man. And another thing I want to talk to y'all is the transition. I never went to high school, so I went straight from a junior college straight to college. And um, the transition was, was extremely hard because I came into junior college not even knowing how to write an essay. I didn't know where to put my punctuations. I didn't know math like that. You know, because the only reason I was going to school was to play football. But um, I knew that this is what I had to do in order to be a football player and in order to get a scholarship. So what I did is I used every trick that I had in my book, man. I was in there. All, I would leave 6 in the morning, and I wouldn't make it home to 10 o'clock at night, every night in junior college. Uh, and I was catching the bus through neighborhoods, you know what I mean? I was kind of rough. You know, it, it was hard for me to do. And sometimes I would want to give up. But... Whenever you, whenever you keep working at something, all right, look at this. I was reading the Sports Illustrated the other day, right? And uh, they had this, a picture. And I, I don't remember what the heading was, but the heading was like, um, you never know how close you are or something like that. And they had this guy in the mine. Oh, yes. You seen that before? Yeah, and he was, he, he was like digging in the mine, and then he was about this far away, and it was like millions of diamonds in there. And then it had him like with his little, with his shovel thing walking away. So you don't never know how close you are, you know what I mean, to reaching your dreams or reaching your success until you keep digging. That's why, you know, I always say never give up, never stop, you know what I mean, and keep pressing the issue to get to where you guys need to get, man. So, um, you know, that's my story and that's where I come from, you know, and, and this is where I'm at now, you know. Four years ago, people was asking my mama, when is the queen getting out of jail? You know, how long is he on probation for? Or um, is he still running with his old friends and stuff like that? Now I'm hearing from my family members that I ain't never even met. You know what I mean? And, and they want to come out to games and they want autographs now and stuff like that. So that just lets you know um, on, on your road to hard work where it can get you. It can change your whole life, man. But you got to want it. And you got to want it better than the next person. Because, like, for you, man, anybody that's, 
you got it. You're going against everybody in the United States trying to get a scholarship, you know, to play football somewhere. So, what's going to separate you from everybody else in the United States? You got to have something. You know, all you guys got to have something. If you guys want to get somewhere in college, get somewhere in life, you got to have something that's going to separate you from the rest. You know, whatever it is. So, whether it's you know, work habits, whether it's even your will. Like, man, you know, this girl, she comes in here, she's asking me all kind of questions after class. You know, I can tell that she really wants to do this. You know, this is what she was really trying to do. She's trying to be the best at what she wants to do. And don't settle for none less. I'm on a practice squad right now, man. And um, so what that means is I'm working all week, but I don't get to play on Sundays yet. You know, and, uh, and that's, that's, that's frustrating for me because like I was <clears throat> talking to my man back there about this, is um, I feel like I'm preparing everybody else to go and play on Sundays. And I feel like I'm ready. I'm ready to do, you know, what I need to do. And um, everybody always asks me, like, man, why you ain't playing, man? I seen you this preseason. You look real good and stuff like that. Man, you should be playing. And um, But, again, me having the kind of background that I have and having, having dealt with adversity, it helps me you know, comprehend on what, what I got going on right now. I can always, I can just sit around and walk around my head down like, man, I'm, I'm better than him, man. Man, like, hey, he sucks, man. They need to have me out there. You know what I mean? And I can walk around with a bad attitude around Paul Brown Stadium all day long, but I don't. You know, I walk around there positive. You know, I walk around there trying to get my teammates better. I play as hard as I can, and I practice as hard as I can. It was just to let you guys know that, you know, if you guys think you got it bad, there's always somebody out there who had it worse than you. And some of y'all may have had it worse than me, but I just want to let y'all know that, you know, anybody, everybody struggles. But it's how you overcome that struggle that makes you the person you are today and what's going to help you, you know, reach the top. And I know that all y'all trying to get there. So, um, you know, motivated me, um, me seeing results. I started seeing good results um, off my hard work. Because it's hard. Imagine going to the gym every day of your life and your body stays the same. You know, you ain't going to want to go to the gym no more. So if you, uh, or you might not be working hard enough in the gym, you know. But um, I started seeing positive results on what I was doing. And uh, that's, that's what kept me working hard. And it made my mama proud. So what happened? Who noticed you for you to get to the practice squad from community college or like what happened? Well, I got a scholarship to the University of Kentucky. And um, I did I did pretty well for myself there. My last year I got hurt and I had to have shoulder surgery. And um so I, that messed it up. I messed up my whole chances of getting drafted and stuff like that. So I went into the Cincinnati Bengals as a free agent. And then when I went in as a free agent, what they do is they bring in a lot of guys for camp. They bring in about 100 guys for camp just so, you know, all the starters can take. They don't have to take that many reps so they don't get hurt. So when I came in, I was basically like a camp body. But I ended up doing real well. So they kept me. They're like, all right, we see potential in this guy. Whenever you're on a practice squad, it's because you have potential, like which you can be. It's like going to college and they redshirt you. You know what redshirt is? Yeah. It's like when they, when you could go to school, but you can't, and you could practice, but you, you, can't, um, you can't play. And that year doesn't count as your eligibility. Yeah. But that's what happened. I just did pretty good up there. And got better. And that's another thing, man. If you uh, all you guys that's, that's trying to get somewhere in your life, try to surround yourself with people, man, that that are trying to do the same things that you guys are trying to do. And um, that that helped me out a lot. Cause it's like I friend. Remember I told you guys, my friend called me from junior college. He um, he was he was like a role model to me. And he didn't even know it. He was somebody that you know put me in the right direction. And then being around him. It had me being around other football players that were trying to, you know, get scholarships too. And there's going to be guys on, on the team, like, you know, wherever you go, or people, coworkers, whatever you guys do, 
who just do it just to have a job. And I wasn't trying to be around those kind of people. I was trying to be around people who was trying to get a scholarship. Then when I got to, to Kentucky, I was trying to be around people who were trying to be the best that they can be. And that's probably why, you know, I ended up here where I'm at today. How do you feel about, like, the weather change? Like, you oh, man, that was, that was crucial for me. <laughs> I bought, like, my first big jacket, you know, that I've ever had. So it was, it was hard, man. But, um, you know, it, it was worth it. Because you got to experience change in your life. You know, you don't always, you don't want to stay comfortable. You know, once you're comfortable, you stay comfortable, then you don't want to try nothing else. So, you know, I'm glad that I moved. And, you know, that's almost halfway across the U.S. So um, I'm glad that I moved far from home because it helped me grow up to be a man. And I'm sure that it'll do the same thing. You know, it'll help you, you know, it'll help you make choices on your own. You can't run home to mama. You know, you can't run home to daddy or whatever. You got to... You got to be a grown man now and learn how to make your own choices. So I think, you know, that was one of the reasons why I chose it. And the snow was just <laughs> icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. What's up? Um, you're coach, so you have, what Communication. Huh? Yeah, it was, um, well, when I got to college, the, uh, the person who puts all the classes together. She's like an academic advisor. And, um, you know, I love her and everything, but it's just the way it is, is that, you know, if you're a football player, you automatically are like a statistic there. So they try to put you in the easiest classes to get put on the football team. You know what I mean? So, and I, I, I didn't want that. I didn't want to, you know, get into psychology or, you know, get into family and be a social worker. That, that just that, that wasn't me. So uh, I told I, like, I don't want to do that. You know, I want to I want to work with kids. You know, when I get older, I want to work at like probation schools. And, you know, do that kind of stuff. So I got into communication to help me with my communication level because it was low. You know, being incarcerated a lot, you kind of like you kind of center yourself. You don't want to come out that shell, and you're always in protective mode. So uh, and I knew that. And that was a good thing that I, that I knew of myself, so that's why I wanted to, to be in uh, communication, so I'm to communicate better. Are you talking to your dad? Yeah, you know what's crazy is um, I talked to my dad, man, and I, and I hated my father because of all the stuff that my mama said that he did to her, you know, physically, and, you know, the drugs that he was involved with, so I had this hate for him. And then um, my mother is such an awesome person that uh, she told me to get a good with my father because her, my grandfather was dying from cancer. And she was like, I want you to know your dad and um, I want you to get to know him because I don't want you to know um, everything bad about him and I don't want you to have to go through you know, him dying or something and you thinking what kind of guy. What kind of guy he could have been. So I thank my mother just for being a strong woman, you know, and, and but I, I forgave him and I and I'm and I thank myself for forgiving him, man. Because I couldn't. I I, I could easily say, you know what, Potters, you know, for you not being around my life this whole time and you want to get involved in my life now that I'm in the NFL, I'm cool on you. But uh but I didn't. I forgave him. And um and I'm happy because it made me happy inside. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing for him. It was just for me. Now I know my pops, and he can just, you know, feel good to just get a good warning from him now. I just say, you know, what's up, Dad? How you doing? So I talk to him. What's up, yeah? Do you feel like people try to use you now that you feel people come around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I don't, I don't feel like people try to use me, but I feel like you know everybody got their hand out. But when I had a hand out. You know, my hand left was left empty. So, um, you know, I just remember those kind of things. And what I do is, if I even got a second guess about if this person would help me, I don't help them. You know, I mean, my mom, my mom mad at me right now because I'm always questioning, like, what do you need this money for? And she feels like she doesn't need an answer. You know, she don't need an answer to me. I mean, mom, I took care of you for all these years. You know what I mean? I don't need an answer. You just, you know, I need to get my money. But, 
It ain't like that, though. You know, let me know what you need it for. Because I never told my mama no. So I could see if I told her no before. Like, but I, I never told her no. And I helped her out, you know, tremendously. So, but she gets mad about stuff like that, man. And, and, and money is good. Money is a good thing to have, man. But, man, just like um, Big and uh, Diddy said, man, more money, more problems. That's, that's the truth, man. That's the truth. Because I never think that, you know, money would have... My mom not picking up her phone right now. You know what I mean? It's money. Like, you know what I'm saying? There shouldn't be nothing to come across paper. Do you still, like, do you talk to your sisters? Yeah, I talk to my sisters every day. One of my sisters is still struggling right now. I came home with an STD. Um, he's on drugs. And um, she's just kind of caught up in that life. And that's extremely frustrating for me because I did that path. I walked that path already. So why you want to do it? You know, but she's at that stage where she knows everything, so anything that I say, it's, it's irrelevant because, you know, she's at that stage where she thinks she knows everything, but really she don't know nothing. And um, it's just been hard for me because, you know, we don't, I don't have a father like that, and my father's still out in Compton. And, um, you know, when I get a chance to, to talk, when I was home, none of this was going on, but right when I leave, like, it's a whole bunch of stuff that started happening, so... That was one thing that was hard for me, you know, leaving, leaving away from home, just seeing how much my family changed and seeing how much I impacted my family. Have you ever thought about, like, living out here? <laughs> yeah, I did, but my job security just isn't strong yet. In this kind of league, I'm <laughs> people get cut left and right. It's a, it's a hard business to be in. So, you know, I got cut this year. Uh, right after final cuts, I got cut. Didn't know what I was going to do. And then, um, luckily, you know, I just prayed on it a lot. And um, they called me back up five days later and signed me. And that was the, probably one of the worst feelings that I've ever had in my life. You know, because I had a sense of, man, I'm not good. But, like I told you guys before, when, when something bad happens, how, do you guys, how are you guys going to react to it? You can act in a bad way, or you can act in a way where this isn't going to stop me. It's just a speed bump. So right when that happened, the next day, what did I do? I went and started training. And that gave me fuel to my fire. And what was going through my head is if I ever play the Bengals, I'm going to go off on them. And I'm going to have you know, a <laughs> heck of a game. You know? So that was, that was what was going through my head. So that, that's, that lets you know what kind of fire you got to have. And how many times you get knocked down, you got to get back up even faster than you feel. Now that's tough, because uh, my mother supported me, even though the idea sounded crazy. My mom played football. I'm like, well, yeah, I played football in your life. And she's like, yeah, you can do it, baby. You know, just go out there. And you can push your mind whatever you do. But my advice to them is, um, every every time somebody tells me I can't do something, I want to prove them wrong. Every time somebody says. You know, you can't do something, I'm saying I can. And even if I fail at it, I'm going to try it until I eventually get it. Or if not, I'm going to die trying. I, I would die trying before I say I can't do something. You know, so um, I think that's, that's what separates, you know, the good and the best from the average and the intermediate. And I think that's how she should, she should take that. She should take that as fuel to the flame and be like, you know what? This is this is what I'm doing. This is, um, there's no, there ain't gonna be nobody to hold me back. If you said I can't, yeah, yeah, I can. So use that as in a way to work harder. And she just has to have that work ethic that's gonna drive her. You know, it's not too many, it's, it's not too many things in life that, uh, that people can say they outwork me on. There's a whole bunch of guys on my team that said that they're faster than me. There's a whole bunch of you know students I went to school with that said they were smarter than me. But if they put me and them on a treadmill, I would die on that treadmill before I got off. I would die before I say I couldn't, before 
he beat me on that treadmill. You see what I'm saying? So that just that just shows you what kind of um, what kind of dedication you have to have for what you want to do. It because it, it's gonna be a that girl or whoever's dealing with that is, is gonna have is gonna be dealing with a lot more than, than that. So that should be easy. Um, my auntie, she just caught breast cancer, and she's such a strong woman, man. And um, you know, she told me the other day, she said, "This is it. This is breast cancer." <laughs> they better come with something stronger than this to, t to take me down, you know. So you got to, you just got to be a strong person in this world, man. It's like the jungle. The we, the we get eaten, <laughs> you know. The strong got to survive, and I think if you if you take life that way, it'll take you to where you need to be and want to be. You had spoken earlier when we were having lunch. Um, about some friends that got caught up in the college scene. Yeah. Some um, fellow football players who just got to you. Talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, I had a cousin that went to the University of Southern California, played with Reggie Bruce, Lindell White. And he was starting in front of both of them. And um, he just got caught up in the celebrity world. He was, you know, and he dating all kind of celebrity women and stuff like that. And his name was out there. And, um, he was out partying all the time and just didn't take football serious. You know, he just felt like, you know, he was young, he was around Hollywood and felt like football was the main thing that he had. He, it was a side thing for him. He liked the superstar part about it more than being a football player. You know what I mean? And then um, he just got caught up with the drinking, the wrong crowd. So it's a coincidence, like, how things off the field can turn over and, you know what I mean, bite you on the field. So it just so happened after doing all this, not getting the right rest, he injured his knee real bad. And then, um, you know, put him up for the rest of the season. And he's the one that told me, like, man, I, I wish I wouldn't have went out and I wish I wouldn't have did these things and I wish I wouldn't have got arrested because it might not seem that big while you're doing it, but when something vital like that happens later on down the road, it's crucial, you know. So you just don't ever want to be one of those people where I wish, you know, I didn't do this or I wish I didn't do that because it can easily happen. And when you guys get to college, the number one thing, you know, that I see people picking schools on is partying. Oh, what kind of, you know, parties are they going to have? What kind of clubs? What's the atmosphere around campus life? And that's, those are totally the wrong things, you know, to be looking at. You got four, five years tops of your life to go in there and get your bachelor's. And then um, after that, you know, it's time for you to step out of reality and get a job after that. So my whole thing is, if I would tell you anything, is don't look at those like, those four years of your college. Look after that to see, um, you know, how is that going to set up your life. Look after those four years to see on um, how that's going to set your life up to be. Because if you go out and you BS in college and, you, you know what I mean, you're partying and stuff like that, it's like defeating the whole purpose of going to college. You know what I mean? You're there for one reason, and you need to just step into college like a grown man and a grown woman, attack the books, do what you got to do. And, you know, it's cool. As long as you handle your priorities first, and, you know, you're a little older, and you can go out to the movies or, you know, go out with your teammates or whatever. But just all, you always got to be smart, man, and, and make sure you keep your college, you know, and, and your schooling first. Uh, yeah, I like I like basketball. Um, I was just too aggressive for basketball. I probably would have fouled out in the first quarter, you know what I mean? But basketball was fun. Um, all sports, man. But I just I, football was just something I always grew up playing in the streets, you know. And I had so much aggression built up in me, and that was one way that I could let it out, you know, was through the football field in a positive way. Well, my junior college, I went to Los Angeles Harbor College, and that's in uh, Los Angeles in California. And then I got a full ride scholarship to the University of Kentucky. So you go there now? Huh? So you go there now? And you play for the too? No, well, I I graduated 
here from UK. And then, nah, you good. When you go to a junior college, you have Yeah, you go to junior, junior college, you do your freshman, sophomore year there. And then when you go, if you transfer over to university, you do your junior senior. Yeah. So is there anything, like, you might, like, fall back on, I'm not saying that football won't work out, but I'm just saying, like, you have anything about that? And that's, that's one thing that, that I had trouble with, man, because, you know, before football was, you know, I, I really didn't have too much to fall back on to. So that's one thing that I'm kind of trying to go through right now is, you know, what do I want to do really with my life? So I, I really don't know yet, to be honest with you. Well, you could be like a model or just kind of like, <laughs> like hair care. Like, you know, I'm so serious. I appreciate it. It's just that I he got a lot of hair. So. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, you, anybody can give you all this kind of advice. I can sit up here and, and talk to you guys about, you know, the stuff all night. But what are you guys really going to take home from me? You know, what are you guys, how are you guys going to attack, you know what I mean, what you guys want to do in life now? You know, because I'm just here to give you guys some motivation and keep it real with y'all and let y'all know y'all can do it. It's going to be so hard. I know. Especially me. Like, I got two jobs. I know you don't. And right now is probably one of the hardest times of y'all life, man. Being a teenager and not having the kind of money y'all want and, you know, just dealing with that kind of stuff and having to work and school on top of it. You know, I, I, I feel y'all pain. I understand y'all struggle. But um, after, after every, like, rainy night, you know, usually there's a bright day, a bright day to follow. So you guys got to remember that, you know, all this hard work and everything that y'all putting in right now is going gonna, gonna to pay off for y'all, man. So don't get discouraged and whatever you do, don't give up. You know, you're working two, three jobs, you know, school is hard. You know, so what? You know, you got all your legs, you got hair on your head, you know, you're able to move. You know, I got people who wish they could just stand up and sit in the chair and read a book and walk out of the classroom right now. So think about people who got it worse than you every time you think your life's hard. Um, what types of things do you think you gain from going to college, like not just playing football, but like in terms of academics? Oh, uh, academics. Um, well, it taught me social skills. It taught me a lot of social skills. It taught me how to interact with people, you know, hold good conversations. But more than anything, it's, it's, it's going to set up my life after football. You know what I mean? It's going to set up um, whatever kind of job I want after football. And I'm just blessed to, you know, be playing, getting paid for playing football right now. Because, you know, luckily I do have a degree to fall back on. And that is potent. You know, that puts you right here on the merit ladder when they're going through you know, resumes and they're going through job applications. That sets you ahead of people. So, uh, you know, it's almost like getting a head start in a race when you get your degree. And then, uh, and then when, when, once you get that, you can always, that's, that's, that's just an awesome piece of paper to have, man. One of the most best pieces of paper to have. And I didn't understand it. My junior college coach, he was like, I don't care if you make an NFL. My main thing is, is that you get your degree. Football is only temporary. NFL, what we call it, it says not for long. And that's true. Injuries, competition, you get cut, you know, all this kind of crazy stuff. So, you know, and then now that you got a, a piece of degree to fall back on, you're going to be all right. How do you feel about football sometimes uh, causing practice? 
books? Because we learned that about, like, we learned about that in like psychology that now like some football players were trying to sue because of like they were getting practices with me and all this other stuff was getting hit so hard. Um, I feel like that's just. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Um, it's a bunch of stuff. It's been players saying that they're, um, that they, uh, they get real depressed, suicidal. There's been a lot of suicides in the NFL due to concussions and stuff like that, they're saying. So uh, I think that's just something that comes along with the game that I play. You know, it's like Muhammad Ali. You know, he knew that rope of dope was going to damage his brain, but, you know, that's just something that he took pride in doing. Um, and that's, that's what I do. I, I play this game. I love this game. And, you know, what I'm starting to do, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get closer with the Lord. So I'm not playing it for me no more. I'm playing it for him up there. You know, so um, and I feel like anything you do for him up there, you do it as hard as you can, you know, and, and the best as you can. And I slip up, too. You know, there's days in practice where I feel like that. Like, man, I, don't, I ain't playing on Sunday, man. I don't guys get so much more money than me, man. And I feel like I'm better than him. But then I check myself. Man. Man, you better be grateful for what you got right now. And you ain't doing it for these players. You're doing it for the man upstairs. Because he's the one that puts you in this position. Mm -hmm. So look good for him. Who's your closest friend on the team? My closest friend on the team? Probably my boy uh, Taylor Mays and Ray Malouba. Are you cool with AJ too? Yeah, AJ is cool. He's quiet, man. He's real quiet, dude. And how do you feel about Chad Johnson? <laughs> Chad? I don't know. Chad's crazy, man. He got, he got to get his priorities straight. I think Chad's more worried about the limelight than playing football. Do y'all be talking like Chad's to each other? Like, in practice and stuff? Yeah. Because, like, like, at, at art, is it, like, ten times worse? Now that's not ten times worse because you gotta know that you're you're a professional now. So you gotta carry yourself like a professional on the field and off the field. And um, but yeah, the competition's there definitely, and uh, we get into fights and stuff. I mean, it's it's a rough game that we play. Like so it's frustrating. Me, I saw. Uh, I don't know. I think it was. I don't know who it was. He played for Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Oh, I don't know how they be like talking." Like you know, okay. They show uh, replay. Mm -hmm. And they had a player talking to. Mm -hmm. He was saying some stuff. Probably Terrell Suggs or Ray Lewis. Boy, that was talking. Yeah. Ray Lewis. He's like the face of the NFL. Good player. We have got about uh, five minutes, so please ask uh, questions. I got three sisters. One just turned 21. She just got married and. Um, she just had a little boy, so that's my first little nephew. Uh, I got one, the one who's not doing too good for herself right now, 16, about to be 17, and the other one is 10. So what do you think helped you become a man more like, run up on your own or the actual college experience? Um, I think it's a, I think it's a combination of both those. It's um it wasn't like I tell you guys, it's not about, you know, the things that happen in your life that makes you the person you are. It's about how you react to the things in life that makes you the person you are, makes you the man you want to be and the woman you want to be. And I just think it was the way that I approached college when I got there. You know, I approached it like a grown man. I was like, I know what I can I know what I gotta do when I get here. You know, I approached when I got sent off to camp to see if I was going to make this NFL team like a grown man, you know. And I, and I think that's, those are something that helped me. I, I think it's more of, you know, how you approach life and how you take on life rather than, you know, what you're experiencing through life. That makes you the man or the woman that you are. But definitely it's a mixture of all those, man. And, and you're going to see, just the older that you get, um, I made some deci decisions just last year. You know, I'm 25, so I made some decisions last year when I was 24 that I would never make this year when I'm 25. And I'm probably, when I'm 26, I'm probably going to be saying the same thing when I'm 25. So right when you think like you're mature and you're a man and stuff like that, 
you always got stuff that you can correct yourself on as you grow older. So, uh, but as far as just being a man, I think it's just a mixture of, you know, where you're at and how you go about your business where you're at. same distance to, excuse me, to the football office, and then classes were kind of like, they kind of put dorms in the middle of everything, you know what I mean? So you're kind of like walking distance from everything, but that was, it was just the more convenience of, of, of a dorm. And I think every college person should experience a dorm life, you know what I mean? It's going to be, it's going to be cool your first year. It might seem like, you know, you're not going to like it, but it'd be pretty cool your first year just to experience a college dorm life. I think that's the whole thing of experience in college, you know what I mean, living in the dorms, yeah. So I would, if I had a, if I had like a little sister that was going to college, I would, I would recommend her to live in the dorm, yeah. Just, just a year to try it out. <laughs> 